O mankind of earth, I would speak to you in answer to the calls of your heart for wisdom concerning cosmic dimensions. I come to you then this afternoon to tell you of the differences between ordinary, human, art, and cosmic art, with its practicality, wherein the combination of music and art blend together to produce a healing accord in the universe itself. Just as the physical bloodstream has its host of defense mechanisms, so in a very real cosmic sense, when the oppositional threads are directed against the children of the light, we have our defense mechanisms to defend the Christ consciousness in man, that man, having done all, may stand against the wiles of the princes of this world, whose purposes are banal and untidy, who do not understand the need for cosmic order. When I speak of the cosmic skein, when I speak of the white fire radiance, when I speak of glass beads of crystal descending from planet to planet, it is to enfold mankind in awareness of the defense mechanisms that hallow space. As the Ancient of Days, the earth is indeed a beautiful, radiant sphere from the God standpoint. Mankind, through their misuse of the power of ordered sound, have created an oscillating tie with the astral realm which amplify darkness in hallowed space. We would make plain to all the knowledge of the infinite power of God involving the extension in space of the power of cosmic radiance. What may be termed the divine constitutional protection of the blessed consciousness of mankind is located in space itself, abiding side by side with the vibratory action of human hates and petulancy. When we consider the value of cosmic focalization, we are aware of the need to mentally weave the tapestry that is a cosmic electrode. We utilize geometric figures. We place them in space. And through the outreach of consciousness, humanity may learn to contact the realm of the angelic host. The angelic hosts are everywhere working to serve those who know of their existence and those who know not. The geometric figures embody magnificent cosmic transforming stations and focal points of infinite light. Qualities of God are beamed to this earth 
through this magnificent cosmic network of light substance. Therefore, side by side in space, there does exist the thrust of human density together with cosmic purpose. It is up to each man to seize for himself the destiny of life by tying in to that unification of principle which is to be found in the strands of infinity woven into the structure of time. How holy then are these manifestations? They are the anchor points of the consciousness of God. Let all understand this and let them recognize that at the same time that light is beaming forth, the substance of inspiration, the substance of new architecture to the earth, the environment of mankind is secretly being molded by inspirations from angelic levels. The music of the world must be changed. The concepts of architecture enclosing humanity in strange rectangles of claustrophobic nonsense must expand in due course of time to those spiritual houses of light here even in the realm of the physical where both the globe and the cylinder will be used where threefold flame focuses can be anchored, where the entire complex of housing can be changed, the walls crystal, translucent, and color controlled by the utilization of those powers man already has at his disposal cheaply produced in a mass way so that the houses of the world reflecting the environment of cosmic structuring will at last enable man to shake the dregs of his old environment and begin to build cities of light. Homes where the translucence of the walls themselves will reflect at will the first rays of the dawn, the early rising sun, inspiring men to continuous cosmic attunement. At the flick of a switch, mankind may open the walls of the room to behold the natural panorama of nature. The friendship of the winds, the friendship of the sun, even the friendship of the dew and the rain will be available at will to humanity. Man will understand then his relationship with nature and his relationship with nature's God. Individuals feeling less claustrophobic and closing sense, less sense of boredom, less sense of being unable to still the body and mind, will find themselves able to receive those graces of cosmic inspiration that lead men to higher appreciation of truth. Within the so-called four walls of being, man has often created a viper's nest, the abode of unclean, creeping and crawling things the abode of darkness. As Jesus said long ago, ye are full of dead men's bones. Let all understand then that the inner nature needs to be cleaned. The stables must be cleaned. They must be cleansed by the Hercules of cosmic contact, by the Herculean task of overpowering darkness. 
Let all men understand then that from the farthest suns throughout space, the hallowed network, in its ever-changing variety of shapes and figures, exists. For the conduits that fill space are used by the Ascended Masters constantly. They are used by archangels and cosmic beings journeying from sphere to sphere. In reality, Man, when once he develops the facility of seeing at inner levels, will no longer be bored by outer manifestations, for he will perceive clearly the means whereby he can govern outer manifestations as easily as he turns on a light. The hour has come when humanity must begin to reach up. For if a thousand years hence the civilizations are to reflect the pace that God intends, they must commence now. It is almost too late. And the darkness so long accepted by humanity in all of the boring episodes of degeneration has not fulfilled the will of God, but threatens instead to sweep the world into a sphere of darkness unparalleled in the history of man. A Kali Yuga of Kali Yugas, the manifestation of gross darkness upon the world. Let all understand that that which I speak of is known by your soul. Do not seek to always understand our words intellectually. For then and thereby do you miss many of the subtle points otherwise made as we address you. Men have the fashion of height and depth in their consciousness. They ponder upon our native star, our beloved Venus, as though it were a lamp from home. My beloved consort, magnifying the principle of divine love as I do, together with my own heart's light, would bring to this sweet earth the understanding that the principle of love ought to govern the affairs of men. When I surrendered the office of Lord of the world, and became the regent thereof, I return back home to our own evolution. Many of you who have traveled on various parts of the earth's surface understand travel as recreation. Mine has been none of that, for I have leaped, you might say, from responsibility to responsibility. And this is true of every cosmic and ascended being that I know that is any way related to this system of words. They have had, as you term it, little nirvanic rest. They have had little opportunity to charge and recharge themselves. Their entire concern and care has been for mankind. And we have watched as the waning interest of people in spiritual things, leads them into greater depths of human misery and despair. Often they are steeped in the lore of the dark and do not understand the meaning of reaching up to God in the night. Instead, they hearken to the voices in the night that speak to them of negativity and malpurpose. Let me warn you, when the voices come, whispering darkness and what I may term hypocritical nonsense to you, hear it not. For all of the dark doings of man from the beginning of the earth abide in the dark deeps of the astral realm. True, there is a decay rate, but the history of the earth is not old enough to have stilled these voices 
to where they are not in a natural sense. They remain activated whenever the principle of doubt and mistrust appears in man. Then they are activated and come forth. Monstrosities of creation are they, and they have no place in the heavenly mind. The heavenly mind is concerned with the future. The heavenly mind is concerned with the drawing forth of the divine plan. The heavenly mind is concerned with the benefits of humanity, with how men may be lifted up, how their hearts may reach upward toward God. One of the oldest tricks of the dark powers in the world is to radiate a feeling of hopelessness to humanity. I want you to know that this they do and do it steadily. Let me point out, at this moment, God is pouring out the quality of his love and all of heaven joins in with him. The radiance of the angels is beaming forth and is received by happy childlike hearts. The quality of helpfulness is radiated out by God. All of nature stands to kiss the heart of the world. The fruit upon the trees is the voice of God, the mellowness of God. The fragrance of the flowers is the fragrance of God. The seeds of the earth are the meat of man. All of the wondrous manifestations of nature, these benignly are bestowed upon humanity. The voice of God speaks to them. And then there is also the beam of angelic beauty in the face, even in the eyes of a tiny child. Innocence speaking to age. Yet, while this is going on, simultaneously, the dark forces are beaming hopelessness to man. And why are they doing it, beloved ones? Simply because by beaming hopelessness, despair, darkness, fear, and torment to humanity, they are able to immerse them, to steep them in materialism. For when man loses hope in God, he turns to the world in which there is no hope. And thus the light of hope goes out for man. Humanity should understand this principle. The self-same trick has been worked on them again and again. We say to you today then, learn the process of mentally buoying up your consciousness. Whenever you are told that darkness is all man can hope for? Say, I deny this. Only the light can give me hope, and the light lives, and I have hope. And be aware of the geometric forms in space over which the messages of God flow, just as the blood stream has its own defense mechanisms, just as the body itself has its own host defense mechanisms. So, in the body of cosmos, God has placed as guardian chalices the consciousness of the ascended masters. God has placed the beauty of his light within focuses such as this one. God has placed it in the hearts of the people. And they, as they absorb this principle, can learn to stop the sting of the asp. They can learn to stop the sting of the scorpion whose sting is in his tail. They can learn to stop the hurt of pain in the beast consciousness. For the mark of the beast, 666, is the inversion of the principle of cosmic purpose. The purposes of God are clear. Each soul destined to be a part of the universe 
that becomes the whole is processed gradually, point by point, raised initiatively, step by step, until that one at last becomes all that God is. Then the word can flow forth again. Let us go down and create man in our image and after our likeness. Let men understand the voice of the ancient of days. The wiles have tricked the multitudes. The multitudes sway like the sea, jarred in the bowl of the earth's surface, and brought down to the degradation and confinement of the depths. The beauty of the sun gleams above the waters and is mirrored in the resplendent surface. The reflection of other worlds could be seen if the vision of man were great enough. And it is, when applied spiritually, humanity are able to reach out from this consciousness, this consciousness of confinement to time and space, to other worlds, and to perceive the plan of God as it is worked out in higher stages of cosmic evolution. Through these perceptions, men clearly see that the hallowed environment is lacking upon the planetary body. Men are considering only the dollar, the economic development of the dollar, not the development of the economic development. In order to provide the pureness of good food unto their fellow men, in order to provide the quality of life that negates the pollutions of the world in order to apply understanding to the process of man's environment. We come from our own star. We come to the planet Earth and we bring with us angels of the sacred fire. We would stimulate the hearts of men once again to process cosmic desire within themselves. Why should they be satisfied with the bestial requirements of simply food and drink and the satisfactions of the physical form? This is the mark of the beast. The acceptance of all that cares for the outer man with the denial of all that currently and forever cares for the spiritual man. O hearts of light, this is the battle of Armageddon which you face. This is the battle between light and darkness. Be not deceived. Arise and awake and understand that this battle goes on before you even at the high noon of existence. As men perceive in their little personal struggles how their own family life is sometimes distorted by personal squabbles and disturbing conditions of the outer. So let them understand the balance of cosmos is a larger reflection in this sphere, in this corner, right where you are. But higher provision has been made by God. Higher provision has been made for the emancipation of the earth. And I tell you that the slavery conditions in this world are legion. They are legion, yet... In our ministry to the world, quite some time ago, we constantly held the torch of life for this planetary body. This is a saying you have. In Flanders' field, the poppies blow, row on row, row on row. And the remembrance of mankind of the degradation of past war is before the consciousness of mankind perpetuated by his thought. But what of the degradation of the purposes of God? Who has considered for a moment the degradation of all those holy purposes? The progress of the world is so tiny. Little by little, men are lifted into higher dimensions and the moment they seek to escape from the thraldom of the world, then 
one of the dark ones comes to the mind, and then one of the dark ones speaks to the physical form of some willing tool, and mankind find their hopes are blighted simply because the powers of God are not realized for what they are. They are not accepted and used by man. The consciousness vacillates, it moves, it constantly fixes itself upon outer goals. And whenever we bring forth the great cosmic truths, momentarily men are swayed by the magnetism of our infinite love. But too soon do they lose that glimpse of glory which we bring. Too soon do they lose the hopes of heaven. Too soon do they lose their perspective, their outlook for their future. Yet the bonds of time move them forward year by year, hour by hour. Continually mankind are moving forward. But unless it be with purpose, the forward movement is as a death knell to the hopes of man as well as the hopes of God. I come with a pure, unvarnished truth. I speak the facts of life to you today. I do not gloss over the circumstances of the world, nor the conditions in which I sometimes find the consciousness. I then, Sanat Kumara, regent of the world, uphold before you the vision of the cities of the future. But I say it must begin today. The consciousness of mankind must become the city of God. Envisioned by Augustine of old, it must be envisioned for himself by every man. The consciousness of the city of God, the domain of light, the keeping of the cosmic powers, and now present-day humanity must once again restore to the world that music of the spheres which will give hope to every babe in arms. And in addition to that, the art forms of the world must become inspirational and they must speak of angel hands ministering to humanity today. Unless this brightness be delivered to the world, a darker night than man has ever dreamed will occur. And the staying of the hand of God that has temporarily, momentarily prevented many vast disturbances in landed areas of the world, many disturbances in nature will be removed and nature herself, as she shrugs, will bring to humanity that karma which they have also brought forth as what I will term today the karma of neglect. Mankind have created a karma of neglect. Let us erase this karma and beware and let us bring to humanity the light today. If they will not listen, remember the persistence of the saints. Keep on keeping on, for I tell you, their own karma shall swiftly return in many cases to individuals who have turned their back upon the spirit and have gazed instead upon the flesh suspecting our own chosen people of dreams of darkness like unto their own, they have altered the purposes of their own life and shall receive the full recompense of the reward which they themselves well deserve. Let me tell you, the light of God that never fails is needed by the earth and sorely needed, but the dream of cosmic purpose is to be found all around you the strands of the hair of the angels woven into space, moving by the Holy Spirit, glorifying the consciousness, giving strands of hope, if you will, a crystal ladder lowered from higher spheres that your feet may climb upon it. Be not afraid then, as in the days of old, when the Christ in his beauty was walking upon the water, and he said, Be of good cheer, it is I. So accept the consciousness of higher dimensions. Accept in full faith 
the intentions of God for you today have been given the mantle of our protection. Yet, whether or not you shall keep it shall be determined by what you shall do with it. It is given for the protection of the work. It is given to establish you in that which you have established yourself. It is given to strengthen you. Be strong and be of good cheer, for it is the I Am Presence that will bring you the light of 10,000 suns fulfilling your destiny and drawing you higher into that infinite light which I am. Understand that today every dictation, every pearl of wisdom, every attempt to bring truth to man is brutally opposed. I want to tell you a secret that I have purposely withheld from you, for I did not wish to spread negativity amongst you. But I can assure you that there are places upon this earth where more than 10,000 voices in the astral are decreeing against the fulfillment of every purpose that you decree for. When you understand this, you will understand your need to reinforce the principles of light. Many of these focuses of darkness, these nests of human degradation, exist in the astral realms and continue to exist fed by the nefarious consciousness of mankind. The bookstalls of the world, filled with books on witchcraft and darkness, continue to draw the young of the world into the nets of the superiority of magic. Let me tell you this. If there is no God, how can there be magic? And if there is magic, should it not be the magic of the soul? Should it not be the magic of divine principles? Should it not be the magic of cosmic relief, the teachings of your own God presence? Understand that they shall fall. And because the Luciferian forces attack this messenger today, I saw not Kumara set into motion through the power of the karmic lords, the infinite judgment that shall take 25% of Lucifer's power from this entire planet. And it is done. Let me make it clear that he has possessed for a short time a certain immunity, an immunity from judgment, which may seem a long time to man, but it is not a long time in a cosmic sense. But whenever he attacks directly, those messengers that we have given the power of relaying our words to this planet, he always receives a special judgment of losing his immunity. And if he is not careful, the time will come when he is even bound ahead of time and will no longer have power over the minds and hearts of men. Let me make clear to you then that the power of light which is within yourself, is greater than the power of darkness in the world. Be of good cheer, it is I. The cause is not lost. The battle becomes more intense.
children of the white fire sun, I am Michael, and I come this day with the radiation of 10,000 times 10,000 to assist the children of this world in their fight against those forces in themselves that would bring them down into degradation and darkness. I would bring forth faith, and I would bring forth legions of faith. Join with me then this day in our demonstration of angelic protection and perfection to the earth, for the time has come when humanity must be benefited by a literal inundation of the buoyancy and the radiance of cosmic faith. Beloved angels of my band, descend with cosmic blue fire balls of blue lightning that shall radiate the splendor of the higher spheres into the brains, bodies, and minds of humanity, that they may understand one and all that God is a being of compassion and beauty, bestowing upon all who are ready to receive it the fullness of that light of God that cannot and does not fail. Behold the light that beats your own heart. Behold the light that flows as cosmic illumination across the consciousness of the mind, like an electric spark of infinite beauty, the perfection of God wondrously works in the physical body and the being of man. Those angels that I am invoking this day shall come into Santa Barbara within a matter of a few seconds, and as they descend, you shall feel the radiation of their release of cosmic faith. They have garnered this faith for centuries, and you then are the recipients of this faith. They have garnered this faith for aeons, and you shall be the recipients of this faith. I understand full well how the limited span of man's consciousness does not always take in the meaning of aeons. Therefore, I sometimes use the term centuries to relate to mankind the vastness of the accumulation. Humanity should understand and welcome the gifts and graces of the ascended hosts, of the angelic hosts, and of the cosmic beings, for without them humanity would find that they would be easy victims to the prey of those negative states of consciousness which completely conceal from mankind the reality and the joy which God is releasing. I have called, therefore, for a simultaneous release this morning, that as the angels descend here into Santa Barbara, so also the cloud which concealed Jesus from sight on Bethany's hill long ago should reassemble its atoms and patterns of perfection and descend with all of its glory and radiance upon this audience that they might feel the dispersal of the hopes of God for every soul upon the planetary body. The time has come when mankind should cease in their shoddy business of constantly playing the role of hypocrisy, of doubts, and of questionings about the existence of God. We do not say that all humanity should accept the Ascended Master Consciousness. We do not say that all humanity should accept the possibility of our speaking to you as we are doing, for they do not know. But the time has come when no one upon the planetary body should doubt the existence of the living God or the perfection and plan behind the universal manifestation. Beings of light, as you are descending more and more into the fixed matrices of the auras of these individuals, so I say, continue to intensify gradually the radiation of your light until mankind's four lower bodies 
can comfortably adjust themselves to receive the fruit of our hopes for the world. The light of the world has come. The light of the world manifests. The light of the world is manifest in the fiery torch of human hearts. For we have kindled the fiery torch within human hearts and upon the altar of consciousness. The altar of consciousness, beloved ones, is that specific place where humanity assemble and disassemble ideas. For there humanity perceive and then proceed to decide whether or not they will accept. Well, in the matter of universal faith, let me say that we would destroy all doubts in all hearts. If you will let us, we will bring forth today with the permission of your own blessed wills, your own blessed free wills, the possibilities of your own ascension and transformation in the light. Oh, how many lovely things we would do for humanity if they would only accept the reality of our existence. For when they accept the reality of our existence, then you see there is an increase of the bond of pure reason in the consciousness of the individual. And the power of divine reason is indeed the power of perfection that shone from the beginning into manifestation and is to the present hour activated in every cosmic being and member of the angelic host. The tiny elementals continue to serve humanity and they bring forth their beauty before the perfected gaze of those who are at inner levels. But even to outer mankind, a portion of that glory is shown forth in all of the redundance of nature which surrounds you. I say now, lower the cloud, intensify the cloud, and drench the beings of mankind with this radiance that they may know and understand that the power of true mystery and of true concealment is a divine power. Humanity have concealed within the force field of their being many times their dreadful acts, seeking hypocritically to hide from one another that which they have done. Let me tell you that behind the radiance of the sacred fire is nothing but the manifestation of glory, of joy, and of perfection. The miracle consciousness of the ascended Jesus Christ consciousness, the miracle consciousness of every ascended being is indeed radiant perfection itself, veiled sometimes from the consciousness of mankind so that humanity may be able to actually adjust themselves to the tremendous potency of these higher radiations and qualities of light. What we are doing then is gradually stepping up the force field of your consciousness as we speak. For I tell you that if we were today in this sensitive time to bring forth the fullness of our radiation, there are those who would not even survive the dictation. For the needs of humanity are very great. They have a need to adjust themselves to the cosmic light in preparation for that transformation for which they seek and call. Humanity sometimes say unto us, Will you give us the radiation of your faith? Will you give us our ascension? Will you give us our victory in the light? Well, I tell you, we are more than willing to do so. But mankind should understand that a certain span of time in many cases is required for the gentle adjustment of the higher radiations of our spheres. I tell you, you would not like to attach yourself to a high-tension wire, for you know very well what would happen to your physical form then try to understand that there is a method in cosmic ideals, in cosmic purposes, that gradually steps mankind up in consciousness until he is able to adjust to the beauty and perfection of heaven. How do you explain to humanity the perfect light of God, the perfect light of God that casts no shadow? How do you explain to humanity the joy and the perfection of higher realms when they have never experienced them except in their soul consciousness. This itself 
becomes a colossal task. And yet individuals expect that we shall do it all. We want to explain to you that there is a required cooperation from your level that assists us in the development of the most magnificent outpouring of radiation in time to come. For we are fabricating those beauteous rods within yourself that possess the power of cosmic magnetization. You have heard men speak and you have heard the masters speak of Aaron's rod. Let me inform you now that every individual who is at all oriented according to his soul consciousness possesses a magnetizing rod within the force field of his being whereby he can for himself draw forth from the heart of God assistance at that moment specifically when he requires it. In the matter of those who are passing through transition, for example, they have found that they have contact with this rod of power. And as they are passing through transition and their physicians suppose that they will not be able at all to even hold the thread of consciousness in close contact, they passing out of consciousness and then into it, suddenly they notice that a rallying has occurred because the individual has made contact with that specific energy which is from higher realms. And at that moment there flows a tremendous outpouring of strength into the consciousness of that individual whereby they are able to fully recognize all that is going on around them. And many times their loved ones are not aware of this at the time they are passing. And they whisper, Oh, they're almost gone now. When those individuals experience sometimes a momentary pang of regret and distress because of the carelessness of those individuals who speak and do not recognize that the consciousness of the individual is fully aware of what is going on all around them. They are also aware of the higher realms of the angels and the buoyancy and joy thereof. I tell you that it is something to stand upon the cusp between the level of humanity and the level of divinity. Yet when men come to a point where they can relinquish, as at the point of death, their attachment to physical objects and the senses, they are able to do so with ease once they bring into play the manifest rod of power that lives within their consciousness. Well, beloved ones, if you can do this while you are passing through the change called death, let me assure you that it would be a more wonderful thing indeed if you could master this principle of non-attachment while you are yet in physical embodiment. Do not be attached to the things of this world, but be attached to the things of God. Most of you are literally unaware of all of the tremendous glory and buoyancy to be found at inner levels of soul. You do not recognize it. Therefore, I say to you today, as the cloud of radiant fire assembles itself around you in the atmosphere, will you peacefully let go for a moment of your outer consciousness, of your identity, of your attachment to physical things, and of just what you physically have to do in the next ten minutes or ten hours. Try to feel in a simple way, as a little child would, that now you are coming into contact, a meeting with your Father which is in heaven. Try to recognize that the power of spirit, the omnipresence of God, is to be found in this cloud of witness that speaks to the heart of mankind of his own personal victory over outer conditions, over the darkness of the world. Try to recognize that you will one day come face to face with the beauty of your own soul, for that soul will be the only reality you will have. Currently, some of you are so busy fixing your hair, and engaging yourself in outer attentions. You are so busy in adjusting your neckties, or tying your shoes, or seeing as to whether or not you look all right on the outer that you do not begin to ask yourself that question, am I like my divine presence? Does my consciousness resemble the consciousness of God? Am I thinking of those things that will teach me at last how to prepare myself to receive the mantle of heaven, the mantle of heavenly awareness. Well, I tell you, seeing that it will be in reality a very short time, less than a hundred years, 
before most of you will be wholly transferred to our octave of light. I think it might be important if you would give it some attention. For you see, by adjusting yourselves to the vibratory qualities and the activities of heaven, you therefore begin to drink into the knowledge of heavenly spheres so that you do not have to do as so many do, suddenly lose your physical body and then find that you do not even have the power of maneuverability. Your body is earthbound. Your consciousness is earthbound. You have no sense of joyousness, no sense of release. You cannot find your way to the higher spheres. You do not know how to call upon the masters of light. You do not know how to receive them when they come. And when the angels come to raise you up out of the socket of mortal density, you stand totally unprepared and sometimes even resist the assistance that is offered to you. I am Michael. I come today that I may bring to you the awareness of that faith which is always prepared to receive the gift of God in all of its outreach to humanity. As the cloud intensifies still more, we step up the vibratory action of the room. We raise the consciousness of the individuals. We invite then an additional band of 10,000 angels to come here and also after the conclusion of the service to disperse themselves throughout the entire state, nation and world in such a manner that the power of faith shall be enhanced upon this planetary body, that many souls shall realize at last the beauty, the perfection and the glory which the I Am Presence is and which the Presence can bring to mankind if they will only release themselves from their attachment to changing outer conditions. Changing outer conditions have no power, yet men have given them power, and thus the illusion persists. May we say, let us pluck up the illusion. Let us see to it today that in the fullness of faith we have accomplished for every human being that which they could not accomplish for themselves. But let us also bring to your attention that we require, in addition to our own momentum, the assistance of your blessed free wills and the activity of your consciousness. Give me your attention. Give me your doubts. Give me your questionings. I will indeed give you my faith. And my faith is a power to transform and direct into the world the great blue lightning love of the infinite Father of all. This power and this faith is real. Many things that you have deemed real, which you call real substance, are in reality the mere chimera, which, shimmering as it does in the atmosphere before you, assumes many shapes, many forms, and many proportions. We want you to understand that the power of consciousness is to transform the illusion into the God control you seek. The God control you seek should be the God control over your physical form over your consciousness, over the domain of your destiny, over the darkness that has ruled your lives. Let the light prevail. Let the light live. Let the light speak out. Let the light say to your body, Obey me, and behold how your body will do so. Understand that illusions must fall as reality is born. So let it be. So let the soul do. So let the soul be a part of the living God. Mankind, in their foolishness and their false persuasions, consider this work to be a work of vanity. What do they think their own work is but a work of vanity and even transitory vanity at that? If there be vanity in our octave, I can assure you that it would be permanent. And therefore, inasmuch as we are not concerned with making vanity permanent, we want to assure you that the vanity is holy in your octave and these messengers are wholly sincere in their outreach toward all mankind. They are sincere and they are concerned for the benefits of all mankind as we are, as all the hosts of heaven are. For while we do not spend our every moment, I must honestly confess, in just paying attention to mankind, I think that the attention we pay is a million times more than the attention they pay to us. We therefore say to you that we shall continue under divine direction to render that service which we do 
but most specifically to answer those calls of those few, the remnant of good faith, who upon the planetary body are not ashamed before men to confess their belief in the heart of the angelic host. O tiny angels, intensify now your light rays. O greater angels, intensify now your light rays. Let a feeling of infinite joy permeate the hearts of men. Let the flavor of the Holy Ghost be tasted by men, that their tongues be indeed blessed by the holy radiance of God, that they may understand that within their own mouth the living word abides. The living word abides. The living word abides that can cut men free. The power of victory and transformation is within you. Did beloved Jesus not say to you that by a man's own words he shall be justified? Then let the word of justification, the word of victory in your lives, be the power that frees you from the dark domain of human doings and frees you at last to receive the spirituality that will bestow upon you the immortality and the garments of light that you ought to wear and ought to understand. For these garments are garments of understanding. They are garments of truth. They are garments of hope to a world that is still waiting for the hour and the day when the victory of God will be manifest. Let it be manifest in them, and then we shall hasten the day of transformation for the world. Humanity do not understand the role that they play. God has already perfected himself long ago, if he ever needed it. And humanity's job and role today is to perfect themselves according to that cosmic pattern which they already have, which abides within them in that fountain of beautiful faith which I am. Will you accept this faith? Will you be a part of it? Will you accept this faith? and extend it to the world? Will you recognize the power of light itself, the power of light itself, to give to humanity destiny and the destiny sense? The trouble with humanity today is primarily one of shortened tenure. They believe that they are here for a very short time, and therefore they ought to have as much fun as they can while they are here. Let them instead understand that we want them too to have fun, cosmic fun, to have the type of delight in their heart that rejoices in the victory of another human soul, that raises their head high because light has been distributed to the planet, that raises their head high because the name of God has been esteemed. The power of your I Am Presence is glorified today. Let all be glad and rejoice for the bells of freedom ring out, and the bells of freedom are a part of the miracle consciousness which every ascended being is. We remain and we retain for all time and all eternity the glory of God. Let the glory of God and the power of transmutation be heard in your world. Now, beloved ones, I am going to also intensify the heat that you may understand that the power of transmutation to destroy the elements within you which are the bad seeds of doubt shall also assuage themselves. Intensify. 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 And blaze by the violet transmuting flame, by the sword of blue flame, by the white fire core of every atom, let us release mankind from as much of the dark and tarry substance in their worlds as we can. Thus shall the consciousness be free to absorb the radiance of Sanat Kumara and above all their own holy Christ selves and their God present. May the world become free to accept in good faith the teachings of the light that never fails. I thank you.
gracious ladies and gentlemen, the dream of freedom ought to be the dream of every man, of every woman, of every heart. Deep within the enfolding radiance of the beat of life, the strains from far away ought to be capable of recreating a conditioned response whereby the souls of men would find a sense of beauty and graciousness because they heard the sound of far-off music, falling cadences of infinite love, be speaking to every man of the radiance of the universal Christ. From far off worlds comes our word to you tonight. Words of celestial wonder, words charged with liquid light, words engraved with the stamp of freedom for the soul of every man. For tyranny shall cease when men understand the vigilance keeping of the Christ consciousness, beholding the gateway of the largesse of God's heart. Men shall perceive that the immortal presence of freedom is the infinite gift given unto them, a gift of forgiveness, a gift of multi-faceted strength, a gift that by its predetermination sets before the soul the vision of Christ capturing the world for the love of the infinite Father of all. Men think of crowns. They think of kingdoms. They think of the realms of past victory. Yet the sorrows of the world fill the cup of history. And many in past times would not heed the warning of our brotherhood given in advance that they might have that compassionate understanding of heaven vouchsafed to them by angel hands. Strange how many times we are required to prove ourselves. Strange how often we are doubted. Yet heaven has not broken faith with those individuals who are devotees of the sacred fire. Floating in consciousness in the essential grace of God, these are buoyed up and raised up to that place where heaven becomes more real than earth. And sometimes we also, from our level of consciousness, goad them into the practical acceptance of those little pieces of information and manifestation that do and will assist their fellow men in understanding more of the grace of God. What a tragedy that all are not born with knowledge. What a tragedy that all do not find the gateway to that knowledge which is the essential knowledge of freedom that all may share in if they will, that many forsake in preference for the intellectual attainment of the world's texts, thwarted as they are by political overtones and the dominance of controlling the manifestation of man's free will. The little children, more vulnerable than those of some age, are constantly assailed by a thrust for darkness. I come then this night with a renewed determination to answer the calls of those amongst mankind who admire, honor, and love freedom. Freedom ought not to perish from the earth, but unless it be supported by many hearts, 
of invocation solemnly offered to the lords of karma and to the hierarchy of light, we fear that an epoch of greater darkness might descend upon the planetary body. If mankind will respond to the ministrations of higher realms, we are confident that darkness can be rolled back and should be. But the matter of should be and the matter of happenstance require the dedication of many hearts. If the cosmic bonfire is to be lit, this 4th of July, significant as man approaches the bicentennial of the epochs of freedom in this nation, bring to mind the wondrous possibilities of building a new nation together, of building a new world in which the family of nations can function together as a part of a vaster cosmic plan. This plan, taking full advantage of the beauty of innocence, must include the wondrous possibilities of delighting the minds of the very young with the hopes of heaven for humanity and the ages to come. These ages will roll in as the fog rolls in from the sea and no man may deter their coming. That they come with illumination sun rather than an obscuring manifestation is our hope. For as light is given birth in the human heart, we are certain that it will bring greater light. For light begets light and darkness begets darkness. One a manifestation of death, the other a manifestation of life. Let us then determine together that the beat of freedom's feet shall be heard in the land, that men shall learn to hasten and respond to that martial music which envisions an army of light moving across the margin of the world and conveying to the entire family of nations, the radiance of perfection, abolishing poverty by obedience to cosmic law, abolishing ignorance by the education in the things of the spirit. We are grateful that a beginning has been fabricated here and that shortly the Ascended Master University will become a reality, hopefully, a fait accompli of magnificence. Humanity should be so happy and delighted that the possibility of spreading abroad the teachings of the brotherhood, of engaging the teeth of cosmic law in the manifestation of worldly science will ennoble it and bring it to a grander status than ever before. Mother's hearts should be gladdened at the potential opportunity of endowing the youth of the world with the true illumination that becomes the bulwark of a building golden age. How tender is the love of the ascended beings enshrining this concept. How tender ought the love to be of those who come as the first graduates from a school of life. May I tonight then endow in this dedicatory address those of you who will become baccalaureate to this institution with a renewed focus of the flame of freedom in your heart. May I speak the word to the masters of light governing the karmic actions of mankind and may I utter the word and command that it be done that the flame of freedom within your heart shall take on increased dimensions. And as I speak, so be it done, for God has decreed it so. And then the spread of cosmic knowledge will light the torch in many hearts until the purposes of life become far greater than now envisioned by the luminaries of this world. 
in past times we have sought, as at the court of France, to speak unto the kings of France and unto other nobles at the court in the hopes of building a United States of Europe. Today we once again explain that we would build a union of hearts, having despaired of a union of nations until it be done. For to merely unite without creating those altars of integrity which become a bond betwixt heaven and earth is itself an act of singular discredit. For mankind often become victims of their union without a unified purpose. And therefore, in the light of our intent of this day, we bring the radiance of our purpose into higher view. If you would see it, perceive it with the eyes of soul. If you would grasp it, reach out with the hands of faith. Do not mar our radiant image with the hands of light or distrust. Do not soil the purity of our thought with the callousness of your indifferent opinions. We come tonight, masters of light and devotees of the living God, to offer to you the concept of the divine man-child for every one. We do not deny to mankind the rights to enhance themselves with the power and direction of the Christ manifest in all things that live. For of a truth, all things live in him, and he is the fullness of all things. By him were all things made, and without him was nothing made that is made. Through the power of the light of God that never fails, I, whom you call Holy Brother, Sanctus Germanus, stand before you in the full knowledge of divine truth to say that the beauty of the fire of God is a beauty beyond human knowledge. To see the living fire, the color of the flame, to behold it manifest with the power to create change, the crystal image of beauty born in the divine thought is to behold in the face of God a new hope for the ages. But so long as mankind are concerned with past history in view of its lewd misgivings and aborted doings, they are bound to manifest the same things they concentrate upon. Let the history of the New Age, then, be an avant-garde history, written by the pen of the Spirit in advance. Let it include the freeing of every life from the bondage that has kept it bound. Let individuals understand that just as they fear most deeply the bane of ill health, so we fear most deeply the bane of sickness of spirit. Let them understand that to be well physically is a cosmic endowment, but to be well spiritually is the boon of the whole man, body, soul, and spirit, clean and refreshed by the manifestation of the love of Christ and forces in the world the very acts that the Holy Spirit would do. This is the will of God. It is also that diplomacy and tact, that judgment and holy reason, which bespeaks for every man that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The times of the past loom darkly before humanity. Shadows projected by the minds of many into the matrix of the future. We say, let it be stricken from the record of consciousness. Let us create a new age already in the hearts of men. Let us forget the past and press forward unto those things which are before. Let us behold the beauty of witness, witness to the living truth, the living flame which I am. Within you is the spirit of the living God. Within you is the fire of the sun. Within your mind is the imprisoned splendor, which when given full license in your life will create that domain of cosmic destiny that reaches up with hands of expectancy to touch the face of God. Unless men are ready to receive this light, how can we change the consciousness of a world still steeped in the aborted patterns of the Middle Ages, still 
dragging its feet into the dregs of medieval witchcraft and delusion. I tell you, we must once again build up the altars of America, rekindle the sacred flame in the hearts of the people, and rekindle the sacred flame upon the altars of the church. But unless the church repent of its wickedness and its destructivity and its failure to recognize the hand of the living Christ, unless it understand the meaning of true forgiveness, the church will remain a broken altar, an abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place where it ought not to stand. Let men understand then that their own bodies are the temple of the living God. Let them understand that the chalice of their minds become a goblet of freedom if they will but drink deeply of the draught of freedom. I bring it to you this night, for I have asked that an angel ministrant stand before each one attending this service. I have asked that this angel ministrant shall hold within their hand a goblet containing the elixir of freedom, that all who desire to do so may quaff this elixir and be no more the same, because this elixir is charged with the power of the angels of freedom, and they are the angels, truly the angels, which I have directed, if you will, the angels of St. Germain. Let these angels stand before you. Reach out your hands, your spiritual hands, and take from them the elixir of life which I bring this night, the elixir of the life of freedom. Let freedom perish not from the earth. Let it live because you live. Let the fruit of your life be poured into the matrix of our hopes for the world. And now I will tell you this, that little children the world around, kneeling in prayer still, even behind the Iron Curtain, taught by recalcitrant grandmothers according to the communist ideas and concepts, also are today invoking the flame of freedom on behalf of all mankind. Throughout the world, over the mountains and upon the sea, in the ships and the ship's cabins, in the plains in the air above the landed areas of the world, high in the Himalayan mountains, and in secret places here in your own country, and in South America, in all the countries of the world, those who still pray, as Daniel did, in secret, pray for the flame of cosmic truth, of cosmic freedom, to once again manifest itself. Some may say they know not of the temples of Atlantis or of Lemuria, they know not of the retreats of the great white brotherhood. They know not of the tenets of our faith. They know not of the great power of our domain. Let me say this power is every man's. This freedom is every man's. This hope is every man's. This domain of cosmic destiny belongs unto the people of the earth. The earth's people, through their darkness and deceit, through their manipulations and their concentrations upon how they can direct mankind, to do the things which they would direct them to do, that they may make a profit, is itself a defeat of the kingdom of heaven. And the filthy lucre of the world still stands as the root of all evil. For it is the love of money that stands as the root of all evil. Let men understand then that the very fabric of their lives is at stake. The abrasiveness of human nature is such that people who are minded to control you do not care how much they may wear from the substance of your soul. They do not care how much of you they destroy. But we do. And we are concerned enough to bring you our energy and our fruitfulness this night that you may see that from the highest kingdom from which we come, the light of God that never fails is the power of freedom's light. I have asked the goddess of liberty, the head of the karmic board, to walk into this room tonight and to stand behind me upon the platform. I have asked her to raise high the torch of holy freedom, and I have asked her to radiate that light together with the elixir which I bring you, that you may understand that the power of transformation is the power in your soul, the power that makes men whole. Those of you who have a feeling within the depth of your soul that you would benefit the people of the world, that you love humanity, in all of its myriad manifestations, you see them upon the beaches and your hearts are moved. You see them upon the streets and in the marketplaces of life. 
and your hearts are moved with compassion as was the heart of Christ. And still I say earnestly to you the same discordant jungle rhythm and beat of discord that would tear them apart is heard all over the world to destruct the beauty of holiness and the great classical entourage of higher music akin to the music of the spheres. Won't you please be seated? I am here and I am there. I am here and I am there to bring Christ's freedom to the world. I am here and I am there to initiate men into the boundlessness of cosmic outreach. What do I mean? I refer to the outreach of the human soul, to reunion with the spiritual sea. And therefore I say to you tonight, let that tiny spark of soul, or that great spark of soul within your own being, reach out toward God. Be not afraid or ashamed to do so. For we in the higher realms kneel in prayer as a humble child. We kneel before God and we ask that greater light be given to us, that greater dispensations be given to us, that we be endowed with greater power to counteract the darkness of the world. For the world has for too long, for far too long, been in bondage. And unless people do something about it, Nothing will be done. Why? Because God, from the beginning, has envisioned the perfection of his realm, false-shaped, given and received by man. But man has not taken it. Man has turned against it. Man has shunned it. Man has forgotten the ancient echoes of the distant chambers of cosmic joy. The souls of men drooping with unhappiness, should be dripping with happiness. And I come tonight for this purpose. I come tonight to infuse you with a spark of cosmic joy. O oh, angels from our band, bring other angels of cosmic joy and the music of the spheres into this place. Let men listen with the inner ears of the soul. And let them hear the sound of God rolling forth over the ceaseless ocean of infinity. Let them hear the echoes from the shells of cosmic truth. Let the goddess of purity be placed high in the upper atmosphere upon her throne of cosmic service. And let the purity realms be heard by men once again. The purity of the old and familiar song the song of purity and delight that occurred within the sacred fire when all of the morning stars danced together for joy. This is a part of our consciousness. It is a part of your consciousness. It is a part of the heritage of every man. And how we love you. How we love to see you changed instead of changed. How we love to see you at last radiant with the light of God upon your brow. The spiritual eye not opened by dangerous drugs. Prematurely as the violent seek to tear the kingdom of heaven from the hand of God without knowing what they do. How we like instead to see the radiant sons and daughters of heaven crowned with that delight of infinite attainment because they have offered themselves to the fruit of the Holy Spirit, purely, beautifully, and with that light, which I am, the light of freedom. Many hearts await your decision, and many souls of lesser stature than your own are caught this very night in the net of delusion. You come here, with the heat and fatigue of the day. But I tell you, one word from higher realms could dissipate it all and replace it by that invincible armor of divine perfection. The twinkle of an eye is the space between imperfection and perfection. It is the seed of faith 
that produces the miracle joys that God himself would bring to man. Tyranny shall fall, and man shall be free to pursue the elected path, for the spiritual truths are not embroiled in just the letter, but in the spirit of the cosmic law. Well might men then seek to understand this, well might men then seek to realize this, for the secret of their freedom is to be found in it. It is an act of joy and an act of love, an act of divine love and infinite compassion. Men seek to be free from body woes and from problems of weakness in the mind. Let me tell you that one little drop of cosmic perception can inundate man as though a blinding flash filled his consciousness and suddenly the entire universe was born within his heart. Why? Because God is not limited by the self-imposed limitations of some men. Christ freedom can be won now because God wills it so. Do you and are you able to accept the potential for yourselves? If not now, then in a moment. For men do not have the time in which to dally at their cups. The race is before you, and the race is between light and darkness. It is up to you as to whether or not the earth shall be free. For few are they who hear our words. Few are they who feel our love. Few are they who understand the shortening of this day and the darkness that approaches. As a smothering cloth, it seeks to extinguish the light of freedom upon the earth to generate discontent and foment violence. We who understand the hidden laws recognize that the dark hordes must be driven back in the solar system in which you live. Two laggard worlds have already been destroyed. Let men understand that in the remnants of the asteroid rocks is the historical lesson, the epoch of human failure upon other planetary systems. Many of these lives, of these life streams, are embodied here today. These are they who quickly respond to the evil vibratory actions of the world. These are they who abide and dwell in darkness. Let men understand we need sons and daughters of light who are unafraid that they may lose their lives, but willing to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when the last trump of mankind's human reason has sounded, because the trump of God's divinity is always sounding the own, the home, the delight of the fabric of life, the sunburst of cosmic truth, is creative and creating. Within the folds of the universe, at every point in time and space, the sunburst of this light, like the nucleus of an atom, stands ready to bring to the spiritual consciousness of man the awareness of the first photon of light, the flash in the pan, which is the twinkling of the eye of God and the victory of the resurrection, the ascension, the I am presence, the flame of life, the joy, the beauty, the perfection, and the radiance, which I am, which all masters are, which all mankind are, once they realize it and hold fast to it.